Uh -huh. ...be concerned with anything else in the world of sport, but Jeff Passel found out otherwise when he visited the final day of the Sportsman Show this afternoon in St. Paul. Today's finale of the Sportsman Show in St. Paul brought on a rather interesting matchup because it ran through 8 o'clock this evening, which meant the show went head-to-head -head against the Super Bowl. Surprisingly, at kickoff time, the crowd at the Civic Center in St. Paul was still pretty strong. It seems not everyone's a football fan, not even on Super Sunday. How come you're here at the Sportsman Show instead of watching the football game? Well, I think uh, this is really more interesting right now than uh, football. I'm not that crazy about football. You don't care who wins the Super Bowl? Not really, no. No money on it. I don't like football. I'd rather come here and walk around, look at all the exhibits. I'm a fisherman at heart, and there's a lot more things out here this year than past. Uh, the boats, uh, the Babe Winkleman show was real interesting upstairs. A lot more displays this year than there was in past. You don't care about who wins the Super Bowl? Oh, I guess if I had to, I might, but uh, I'm a fisherman at heart from Minnesota. And even if you do happen to be a diehard football fan like yours truly, and you're here at the Sportsman Show, there's always at least one way to get a good glimpse of some Super Bowl action. Just find one of these trailers that's hooked up with a television, walk inside, pick out your seat, and sit down and watch the ball game. Jeff Passel, News 11 Sports. He always finds a way to get out of work somehow, you know that? <laughs> News 11 Sports has learned that longtime Viking assistant Jerry Burns will decide tomorrow between the Vikings or Cleveland Browns. Burns told us that he sees no reason why he and the Vikings can't work something out, which leads us to believe he will stay with Bud Grant in Minnesota. Now, earlier today, former head coach Les Steckel told News 11 Sports that contrary to what some local writers have reported, there are a lot of people interested in his services. Steckel says he hopes to make a decision within the next six weeks about which job he will take. Don't be surprised if he decides on joining former Viking assistant Raymond Berry, the head coach at New England. Gopher women's basketball team hosted Michigan State this afternoon at Williams Arena, hoping to extend their Big Ten record to 4-1. They did. The final was 84-70. Highlights, Gophers were led by sophomore Molly Tadich. She scored 24 of her career-high 31 points. In the second half, she also grabbed 10 rebounds. Laura Coonan popped in 30 points of her own, scoring off a nice pass from Little Falls' Debbie Hilmerson. 84-70, the Gopher women now 4-1 in the Big Ten. The only college game this afternoon, Notre Dame lost to DePaul. The final was 71-66. Irish were led by fancy dribbling freshman David Rivers. He had 21 points, and Notre Dame led late in the second half, but DePaul's defense was superb. Ken Barlow rejected by Dallas Comagies. The Blue Demons are on the fast break. The feed to Tony Jackson, 71-66. DePaul beats Notre Dame. Now let's check in with the Phoenix Open. It was Doug Toole leading with two strokes coming into the final round, but he fell apart. Triple bogeyed on the 14th hole. He ended up shooting a 72 today, tied for second with Morris Hapalski, who is putting right here. Calvin Pete was the winner, although he had a little erratic day. He shot a 68 to win the $81,000 at the Phoenix Open. I want to say a special thank you to Jeff Hansen and Jason Volbrecht, my 14-year-old pickers from White Bear Lake. We were 70% right during the season, and they got me out of a deep hole that they got me into last <laughs> year when we said Washington would win the Super Bowl. They said San Francisco by seven. I went with their pick, and they were absolutely right. Good. Do you have All anything right. on the Vikings for next year? No, nah, not yet. Okay. okay, thanks, Randy. Maybe in an hour. <laughs> Coming up, the end of a tumultuous year for a Jordan family. Bernie Grace looks back at a year filled with nightmares, jail time, and courtrooms for the Bensons. Next on News 11 Extra. You make your own pizza, Tombstone. Take the ladle on and load it up with lots of mozzarella on the pizza, Tombstone. We pile on the goodness, we're loaded with real cheese. We're sure the taste of Tombstone's gonna please your family. We're a small town homegrown, made the way you make your own pizza, Tombstone. Made the way you'd make your very own, Tombstone. When a company gets bigger, it experiences growing pains. The pain of throwing out communications equipment that's suddenly obsolete. The pain of buying new equipment to replace it. Fortunately, there is Centron, the only communication system you'll ever need, because Centron service will grow as you grow, simply inexpensively. Centron communication system. Growth without the growing pains. Centron, from Northwestern Bell. Europe. Holiday travels tours to Germany, Austria, and Switzerland are filling fast, so call soon. Europe tours combine well-located hotels, delicious meals, experienced guides, and a carefully planned itinerary to make the tour a vacation of a lifetime.
Tours depart the Twin Cities May through September for only $19.95 a person. For a free catalog describing holiday travel, air vacations, call Holiday in Roseville. If you live outside the Twin Cities, dial 1-800-622-1622. Call soon. Thursday through Sunday at Met Center, live on stage, a musical treat for the entire family, Alvin and the Chipmunks and the Magic Camera. Join in all the singing, dancing, and laughter of this magical mystery adventure. Thursday at 7.30 is WTCN Family Bargain Night. All seats $2.50 off the regular adult price, courtesy of Channel 11. Get tickets now at Met Center and Dayton's or charge by phone, 853-9300. It was an anniversary of sorts for Jordan, Minnesota family today. One year ago, Robin and Lois Bentz were jailed and their three boys placed in foster homes. The Bentzes faced charges of sexually molesting children, charges they eventually beat. In tonight's News 11 Extra, Bernie Grace joins the Bentzes for a look back at a year that was nothing less than a nightmare for that couple. January 20th, 1984. A deputy led Robert Bentz and his wife to jail to be booked on sex abuse charges. Their thoughts then? The same thing I'd been thinking for uh, quite a while since the neighbors were picked up. It was a witch hunt. We had this thing hanging over our heads for nine months, uh, as far as Lois and I, uh, as far as uh, are we going to go to prison or aren't we? From the beginning, the couple claimed their innocence. I didn't do it! Last winter was a cold, lonely winter at the Benz household. Crank calls broke the silence. But with their three boys in foster homes, the sounds of children playing were never to be heard. It's a living hell. To have your children ripped out of the home like that and knowing that you're innocent and not knowing when you'll get them back and not knowing what the county's doing to them, uh, it's terrible. Right up to their trial, the Bensers were one of several couples offered deals by the state, plead guilty, no prison time, just treatment. They said no. We'd go to jail for 40 years for something we didn't do rather than plea bargain for 24 months for something we didn't do because at least we still had our self-respect. I wasn't going to say I did something when I didn't. I was going to turn and fight, and that's exactly what we did. Their attorneys did the battling in court. They argued the children who were accusing the Benzes of sex abuse were brainwashed. The jury believed it. The Benzes were found not guilty. We felt all along that our clients were not only not guilty, but they were innocent, innocent of these charges. And they're victimized by somebody in Scott County. Prosecutor Kathleen Morris had a different view. Yeah, I get tired of people screwing kids. And then because the adults don't want to believe it in this society, what they want to do is blame it on somebody else. Despite the verdict, Prosecutor Morris vowed to keep the Benzes from getting their kids back. The focus shifted to family court, hearing after hearing. Since our acquittal, I think we've, I've, I have got more frustrated, more bitter, uh, because our kids aren't home, uh, all three of our kids. Um, the, it's presumption of guilt is still over our head. But earlier this month, the state allowed the Benz's oldest boy to go home with his parents. He says during his year in the care of Scott County, they tried to pressure him into saying things that weren't true. And the youngster talked about the night he was taken from his parents. I was really scared. Um, I was scared for where I was going to live, you know, and everything. You know, what going through my mind is if I'll be going home soon or not, you know, and my brothers, and I was kind of worrying about my brothers if at that time if I was going to live with them or if they were going to be separated right away. So a year later, not one allegation against the Benzes has been proved by the state. And the Benzes await the return of their two youngest boys. In the meantime, besides holding down their jobs, the Benzes have made national TV appearances to tell their story. But the couple concedes there will always be those who doubt their word. There's always going to be people who will believe you're guilty. You'll never lose that stigma. There, there's always going to be people like that. And those people I don't care about. They weren't at the trial. They don't have the full facts. And I consider them quite narrow-minded. The two youngest Benz boys are expected to return home soon. Defense attorneys for the Benzes say once the boys have seen a psychologist again, they expect a court order to be signed, allowing the boys to come home. However, the litigation won't end there because the Benzes have filed a $100 million lawsuit against several Scott County officials, charging them with violating the couple's civil rights. In Jordan, Bernie Grace, News 11. And we want to... Uh, Scott County Attorney Kathleen Morris refused to talk to us about the Benzes. Now, moving along to a quick look at uh, tomorrow's weather. A lot happening tomorrow in St. Yeah. Paul and the nation's capital. What do we got?
Good day coming up for us here. The temperatures will continue to rise throughout the night. Expect around 17 or 18 by daybreak. And then tomorrow, a little bit warmer with some sunshine and 22. Randy? In the NBA, Boston beat Philadelphia today 113 to 97. Tomorrow at sunrise 5 and 10 are girls and boys high school basketball ratings from around the state. And that'll do it for this weekend. Thank you for spending the time with us. Uh, and uh, don't forget <laughs> to tune in to News 11 Sunrise tomorrow morning at uh, 6.30. See ya. Good night. Past year, News 11 has built the most progressive newscast in the Twin Cities. News 11 has expanded coverage with the addition of four new newsrooms, high technology, and the best people in the business. Once again, the latest ratings show that you're responding. In fact, over 50% more families have turned to News 11. Thanks, Twin Cities. You're building the momentum. News 11. Momentum worth watching. When you and your family come to Florida, come to Bush Gardens Tampa and spend a day in Africa. All the best of Africa on the West Coast of Florida. have different kinds of coughs. A dry cough, a cough that keeps you awake, a cough with a stuffed up nose, and some people have a combination of symptoms. That's why there are four different kinds of Robitussin. Each contains an expectorant to help loosen phlegm, one a cough suppressant to quiet coughs, one adds a decongestant to relieve stuffy nose. One combines all these relief actions. Four different Robitussin cough medicines for different kinds of coughs. Which Robitussin should you take? Ask your doctor or pharmacist. Ladies and gentlemen, these are Tostitos brand tortilla chips. They're for sharing. I'm Fernando. What do you guys know about these? Well, just what we've heard around the office. Frank? Same here. I could stand some briefing. You know that the chips everyone loves. These are for you. But there's a catch. I had a hunch, Joe. You have to share. Share America's best tasting tortilla chips. Better get some more. Downtown or out in the neighborhoods. You can get them anywhere, Joe. Hey, Woodard Scott, tomorrow morning, don't you face that cold Minnesota chill without an early look at News 11 Sunrise. Then join me as the nation warms up on today, weekdays on TV 11. Do I like cheese? Introducing County Line Cheese. Back when me and my brothers was just about his size, Mom had packed us cheese sandwiches. Then, while they was off swimming, I'd eat all of them sandwiches. County Line asked an expert about its old-fashioned taste. Now, this county line really takes me back some. Unlike some cheese companies, we still make all our own cheese for that natural old-fashioned flavor. I like this cheese. County line, old-fashioned and proud of it. Hey, you save big bucks on trucks, trucks, trucks. Now at Freeway Ford, the Twin Cities' largest truck selection just got larger. Freeway Ford, 35W, 98th Street exit in Bloomington. Great action fans, the Met Center, Bloomington, Tuesday, January 29th, 8 o'clock. A sensational card. Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, clashes with Playboy Buddy Rose. Ivan Polish Power Putski takes on Brutus Beefcake. Intercontinental Championship, Greg the Hammer Valentine defends against Tito Santana. And a return with Texas Tornado Rules, all four in the ring at the same time. Andre the Giant and Blackjack Mulligan take on Big John Studd and Ken Patera. Special guest referee, Mad Dog Bashan. Be there. Are you ready? Tax forms, tax reforms, inflation, deflation, investing money, spending money, tax shelters, family shelters. And are you ready to build your family's wealth and cut your tax bill in 1985? I'm going to do it because it's going to take money out of Uncle Sam's pocket. I think he's got enough already. I'm Steve Crowley. Each weekday on News 11, I'll help you to manage your money and cut your tax bill the smart way. Making money on the 85 stock market. Tomorrow on the News 11 Hour at 5. Bob Hope here, concerned about the fact that half of all blindness is preventable. January is Eye Health Care Month, and there is hope for saving sight. As Eye Health Care Month Chairman, 
I urge you to take care of your eyes and see a medical eye specialist. There's hope for saving sight.